What's going on there guys? Good afternoon. It is the Earth Master here on the uh, Earthquake Channel with an update video on this Thursday afternoon. It's December 9th, 2021's a date. About 12.47 p.m. California time, latest quake, a 4.3 earthquake in the Aleutian Islands region. You can see that earthquake just coming into the globe there in the green flag. Let's go ahead and check out movement out there along the Pacific where we're still seeing some activity overnight within the uh, Blanco fracture zone. A little bit of migration to the southeast. Also some activity down here at the southern end of the Cascadia subduction zone once again picking up. Uh, overnight it looks like about uh, or at least 24 hours uh, of activity about 23 earthquakes within the Blanco fracture zone. A little bit of migration to the southwest here on the Pacific side of the plate and uh, a little migration down to the southeast along the Blanco Fracture Zone, um, indicating uh, stress buildup down here along the northwestern part of California. That's an obvious sign. We've watched that over the last couple days with movement up here into the Blanco Fracture Zone, ultimately affecting some earthquake activity or stress uh, down here along the southern end of the Cascadia. That's, uh, that's a fact. I've been watching that uh, nonstop. I wanna check out the seven days of magnitudes here we got about 89 earthquakes okay we'll zoom in get rid of those little ones down there actually we need to include those uh, little ones here but there's a lot missing here folks if you look at the magnitudes here most of them are in the fours and fives right some threes in there upper threes but what's missing even with the all magnitudes on seems as though every earthquake under about 3.5 or so is missing so you can't tell me that there's not a whole bunch more happening, not only in the lower three range, but what about the twos and the ones? What's going on there with the microquakes? I guarantee you, if we were to pop all those up, we would see probably listings here in the thousands. And that would probably frighten quite a bit of people, but uh, they, don't, they don't list them for whatever reason. I'm not for sure if I can find them or access them or even uh, get a hold of somebody that could. I may try that a little bit later this afternoon, but uh, more likely they'll just say no or they'll refer me to a dead end. But either way, think about that, folks. Nothing, well, we got a 3.2, but I, there's one 3.2 it looks like listed on the map. But there's got to be more. There has to be, there's got to be many, many twos, right? With this amount of fives and fours and threes, you're telling me that twos and ones are absent of, of, of stress and, and uh, earthquakes here I highly doubt it so uh, you could probably multiply this number right here by 10 uh, maybe get around 900 earthquakes or so I don't think quite 9,000 but uh, uh, they got to be up there in the uh, close to the thousand range maybe possibly over if you contribute all the lower magnitude so just kind of making that point a lot of people think well it's 88 earthquakes out here it's not a lot but man it's just they're not all there they're not showing them all um so yeah a little bit of activity right overnight things seem to be calming down slightly not as intense when it comes to the uh, multitudes here off the oregon coast we have seen a pretty considerable amount of uptick over here around the philippines islands area or the philippines area the indonesia area Solomon Islands all showing a little bit of movement here to the west. We haven't seen any significant earthquake activity aside from that 6.0 uh, and not a whole lot of deep movement over here either. That would ultimately, I think, put a little band-aid of uh, relief of pressure along the west coast out here. It's happening in small increments a little bit, uh, but we're still looking at seismic, seismic increase along the west coast and therefore I'm still uh, keeping an eye on the west coast Cascadia range for possible movement here uh, within with this pattern ongoing uh, we did see some up, uptick in earthquake activity along the southern california region including a, a 3.5 that struck down here just off the coast ventura sits down to the southeast here along the uh looks like the uh what is that pitas or pitas fault zone ventura fault that runs into the uh okay pitas point fault it looks like so a couple specific faults out here. This earthquake was felt uh, by a few folks down there. Also here in the uh, San Jacinto Fault area, most of that activity microquakes, but it is ramping up a little bit on the all magnitudes map. 
uh, with a little bit of swarming down here in the southern part of the state. One thing I kind of want to point out is uh, prior, let's see if we have to go back here seven days, 2.5 and above, to see a lot of this activity in the Gulf that had uh, kicked up prior uh, prior to the uh, activity up north here along the, um, the Blanco Fracture Zone in Northern California. Uh, it looks like we're getting a little return of movement down here to the south. That's kind of why I'm thinking this isn't over yet. Uh, we've seen a swarm of activity in the Gulf, uh, a bunch of fours kicking off down here and also uh, a little bit further south in this plate boundary prior uh, to the earthquake swarm off the Oregon coast. Kind of uh, possibly a telltale sign of things picking back up, especially if we're seeing further movement down in the Gulf region. Overnight uh, in the Oregon area, off the coast of Oregon, yes, there was a few earthquakes out there, but uh, like I mentioned, not a whole lot. Last earthquake in this region, at least according to the USGS, was a 4.1 about four hours ago. Uh, but uh, that's not that's not including all these smaller earthquakes, folks. But uh, could you imagine seeing an article on the news? Uh, thousands of earthquakes detected off the coast of Oregon um, uh, within about 100 miles of the Cascadia subduction zone. Could you imagine the panic that could potentially cause? So I, I just I'm not for sure why these folks don't include it. Uh, but maybe that could be one of the reasons why they're not stating that there's uh, potentially hundreds, maybe a thousand earthquakes or so with this little swarm, a big swarm, not little. I uh, also read a little article by the PNSN folks and I uh, kind of want to read it to you. I definitely have to read it to you while I'm here. We'll go to their site. I don't think they've listed it on their uh, on their website or not. Uh, let's see here. Go over here to the earthquakes, recent earthquake map. Uh, of course they do show all uh, the majority of the earthquake activity off the coast, uh, but then again it's only the uh, um, same amount as the USGS is, is uh, showing on their map. Nothing below the, uh, seems like the 3.5 threshold. There's that 3.2 we mentioned, but uh, there's definitely hundreds more smaller quakes. So anyway, I want to read to you guys real quick what they stated on, the, uh, on their uh, media page. It's about this swarm and uh, there's a few things I don't agree with because we've seen it happen uh, live and <clears throat> if you watch this channel enough you'll know that um, as a whole right and I keep saying that because it's true uh, for example uh, we've seen earthquakes happen over here along the uh, western part of the Pacific Ring of Fire northwestern part um, and it doesn't really necessarily matter what magnitude it is um, soon after very soon after I'm talking potentially minutes after there's adjustment over here or down here or for example on this plate boundary which is a ways away from the earthquake that struck in Japan right this is just I'm kind of kind of pointing out a little a scenario that's happened a lot I've seen it happen a lot so I firmly believe that any adjustment on any of these plates the per higher percentage of the time subsequently produces minor or major adjustment on other areas of the plate. It's, it's a simple fact. These folks here, the PNSN network folks, don't believe that one bit. In fact, they stated here, at least for the Cascadia subduction zone, uh, the stress changes associated with earthquakes of these sizes don't transfer over hundreds of kilometers. So these 5.8s, mid fives, not even not even doing nothing they don't there's no pressure stress according to these folks which i firmly disagree with i've seen it happen all too often regionally globally when earthquakes strike there's subsequent pressure the pressure just doesn't disappear into a beautiful rainbow over the pacific ocean with unicorns flying around okay that doesn't happen uh, ultimately stress from this activity we've watched it on the live stream We've watched it um, throughout the day. Let's go ahead and bring up the seven days, all magnitudes here. The majority of these earthquakes here that happened at the southern end of the Cascadia, and this was awfully quiet prior to the swarming up here. So a lot of this activity in the middle of all this activity that night, me and Missy, uh, Missy Mimi's was up watching it, chatting on the live stream. Uh, we've seen 
activity ramping up here and then earthquakes bouncing down here along the southern end of the Cascadia. Okay, there's a couple different plates here. The Explorer, Juan de Fuca, the Gorda Plate. We've got the subduction zone of the Cascadia, right? That's the name of it with the North American uh, plate over here to the east, Pacific plate down here to the south. All this activity, for the most part, taking place on the Juan de Fuca plate. But these, these slip faults are adding pressure down at this angle, if you will. I can't draw here on the map. Maybe I need to get me a little pad where I can uh, draw on screen. That, that might be on my list here. Um, not for sure what they cost, but I'll definitely uh, add one on here because it's easier to draw on a screen and show you guys what I'm talking about. But the earthquake activity up here ultimately adding stress down here on the southern end of the Cascadia subduction zone. Uh, some of these earthquakes pretty deep. Uh, it shows it right at the southern end, folks. So there's no doubt that earthquake activity hundreds of miles away, thousands of miles away, contribute stress um, on many different areas of the plate. It just doesn't disappear. It's always happening, always happening. I've seen it way too much on the live stream when I watch the seismographs. So I don't agree with what they're stating. Um, and once again, I'm going to read it. And this is what they state. The, okay, the Blanco Fracture Zone is one of the most seismically active areas in North America, even more so than the San Andreas. Even for this area, there have been an unusual number of earthquakes larger than M5 in this earthquake swarm. This is interesting, but let's talk about why it isn't concerning. The stress changes associated with earthquakes of these sizes don't transfer over hundreds of kilometers. So the Cascadia Subduction Zone Mega Thrust Fault, 200 kilometers away, likely won't even notice these happened. And I'm reading what they're stating here. It sounds a little odd in their in their uh, whoever's writing up the story. Uh, there have been over a hundred M5 earthquakes on the Blanco Fracture Zone in the last 50 years, without observed differences in the Cascadia Subduction Zone seismic activity okay but in all my other videos I kind of pinpointed in, and I'm not gonna do it again you guys can search for yourself the search catalog here <clears throat> go back a hundred years and see the uh, large number of earthquakes up and down the Blanco fracture zone and down here along the Gorda uh, escarpment plate but not the significant swarm that we've seen in just a matter of 24, 36, 48 hours here. That's a lot of earthquake activity, and a lot of this has not been um, added on when it comes to the smaller earthquakes. That's a given. You don't have this many earthquakes and not have a bunch of twos and ones in there. So like I said, you can probably add uh, two ones in front of that number right there uh, with over a thousand earthquakes within this region off the coast of Oregon. That's a fact. It makes sense, right? You just don't have um, it, they're short changing it is what they're doing they're not they're not including all the earthquakes so I'm gonna write uh, someone about that today and ask them why they're not being included and they'll probably come up with well it's out there in the Pacific we don't have access to the uh, uh, to, to smaller quakes and whatnot but there's I've looked them up I've looked them up all the seismograph stations out there they're scattered throughout the Pacific along the Cascadia and areas to the west as well I don't have access to them the geologists, yes, they do. There's GPS measurements out there and, and gas monitors and everything throughout this whole area of the uh, Pacific. So I'm going to move on past this. But I just had to state what uh, the PNSN Network's folks mentioned on their, uh, their media page. And uh, I don't agree with it. I don't agree with their, uh, their, their assumption that stress like this, a massive amount of earthquakes, don't affect... Uh, an area not only locally but on a very locked region of the subduction zone the Cascadia subduction zone moving on uh, looking at areas up to the north we did see a li little bit of activity throughout the Aleutian Islands uh, with this 4.3 just happening recently uh, and a little bit of activity as I mentioned along the Indonesia and the Solomon Islands region with some deeper earthquake activity through the uh, through the area here looks like 4.5 around the uh, Mariana Trench, 229 kilometers for that deep earthquake. In the Fiji area, let's go ahead and check out this re region over here as well. 
right? Because uh, a couple days ago, they had a deep earthquake into the Hikarangi subduction zone. Pretty significant. Well, not significant, but it was definitely deep down there. Right there. This uh, 4.7 struck a uh, couple days ago, 172 kilometers into the uh, subduction zone, it looks like. That's way down there underneath the surface. This area right here builds up stress and pressure. Look it up. Hikarangi subduction zone. Uh, but today, over the last 24 hours, just the uh, 4.1, a little bit further south, Wellington, southwest of Wellington, 26 kilometers, uh, still deep, right at that trench region. So watching that area as well. Um, south America has gone absolutely quiet since the activity there um, off the coast of Oregon. So a couple days now of significant lack of activity along the South America trench or the uh, Peru-Chile trench. Little earthquake 5.1 along the uh, central East Pacific rise. That was from late last night. Uh, the Big Island still sh showing some activity out there along the uh, southeast flank and around the Lohi Seamount. Yellowstone earthquake activity has gone quiet. Uh, well, never really picked up. Looks like a couple small microquakes here around the central area of the park. You can see these individualized uh, spikes of earthquake activity on that seismic station, indicating some very small microquakes. Uh, within the last few hours all right folks i'm going to jump off here we will be keeping an eye on it uh, the activity today i'm not taking the earthquake watch down i still believe something's brewing out here along the west coast with the continued earthquake activity off the coast of oregon and also into southern california with the re or south of the uh, southern california region into the gulf of california with a renewed uh, earthquake activity there with that 4.6 happening just uh, a little bit ago so stay safe out there uh, the earthquake globe is looking pretty active. I'm going to drop it back down to the 24-hour threshold right about there. And um, it's still pretty active, let me tell you. Just be prepared. Stay safe out there. And um, if you get a chance, look up the Hikarangi subduction zone. Look up the uh, Search up the uh, catalog there on the USGS earthquake page. And uh, look at all the earthquake activity. I've done it a couple times throughout the update videos, so I don't want to do it again too many times, but uh, the option is there for everyone to go look at and uh, compare the dates, the number of earthquakes on any given date, and one will see uh, pretty clearly that we've never seen in a significant earthquake swarm like this uh, take place since uh, we've been keeping records. So have a good day, folks. Uh, enjoy your Thursday. We will chat at you guys a little bit later on this afternoon. Peace out.